It was the first significant snowfall of the season for most Dane County residents, but more snow and freezing temperatures are on the way. Only half of Madison's roadways have been approved to be plowed. We're taking a closer look tonight at why that is. And a Supreme Court decision on abortion could bring massive changes in Wisconsin. We sat down with Governor Evers to hear his thoughts on the matter. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Well, drivers had a messy commute this morning and we're in for another mess tomorrow and also on Wednesday. That's right, more snow is on the way. And city officials suggest clearing your sidewalks and driveways today before round two arrives tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us now from the weather patio with a closer look at that next round of snow. Gary? Yeah, I think it'd be pretty similar to this one. Maybe a little bit heavier as, as far as the snow totals are concerned. We'll also have to watch out for the potential for some freezing rain mixed in as well. As we take a look at snow accumulation over the last 24 hours, Madison was actually one of the heavier totals at two and a half inches, Dodgeville about two inches. Most areas were between about one and two inches of that slushy wet snow. And on Doppler track, the snow that we had uh, last night has moved out into Canada. The next storm system still to the south and west won't be here for a little while. High temperatures today have made it up into the upper 30s. The snow cover held temperatures down a bit. We thought we might hit the 40 degree mark and skies did clear out late this afternoon. That'll allow temperatures to drop off quickly tonight, but give us a cold start to the day tomorrow. Now, current temperatures are in the mid 30s here in Madison, already below freezing to our north and west. Winter weather advisories have been issued from tomorrow morning through late tomorrow evening for all of southern Wisconsin. <coughs> The advisories start most areas around 9 a.m. and then last until midnight for areas north of the Dells. As we check out the uh, day planner for, uh, for tonight, look for low temperature dropping to around 20 degrees. The skies turn cloudy overnight. Tomorrow, look for snow to develop. Could be mixed with some sleet, freezing rain, or rain for a time, especially from Madison southward. High temperature at 34. I'll show you how much snow we can expect in just a few minutes. All right, Gary, thank you. And now is a good time to grab the first worn weather app from the App Store if you haven't done it already. Gary and the rest of the weather team will be updating it around the clock with the latest forecast and conditions through this storm. It will give you all the tools to be ready, like the radar and hour-by-hour -hour forecasts. Just search for WISC weather. Now today, the City of Madison Streets Division plowed and salted more than 800 miles of roads, but that's only half the roads in the city. And that's because the City of Madison separates all of its roads into two categories during a snowstorm. Roads that they salt and those that they don't. Talil Moladeen joins us live to tell us why it might make a difference for you. Talil? Unless we get more than three inches of snow, those non-salt roads aren't going to be touched. That probably includes your neighborhoods and roads that, like this one here, which, as you can see, really hasn't been plowed. Now, I spoke with a woman who says she's been trying to get the city to reconsider which roads get plowed and which don't, and she shares why for her it's a safety issue. Nobody wants their cars wrecked, and the one day last year, it, there was several. Co-owner of Pulvermacher Cartage, Kelly Pulvermacher, is asking the city of Madison for help. Just recently this year, they actually told us that we are on a no salt route, so we won't be even touched until three inches or more. She wants the city to add the road outside her trucking company to their salt route. There's a lot of traffic on a daily basis, and it lines up out into the road. Traffic, she says, is coming from a nearby COVID testing site. But right now, that road doesn't meet the city's criteria. Major thoroughfares in Madison, so roads around schools, hospitals, roads used by Madison Metro Transit, things like that. City officials say when it snows above three inches, it takes about 12 to 14 hours to plow the whole city. All that salt winds up in our waterways, and also a lot of it winds up in our drinking water, too. So we can't salt everything every time it snows. So they have to prioritize. Plus, the same people that are driving the plow trucks, they're the same ones that are driving, picking up your trash, picking up your recycling, picking up Christmas trees when that comes. There's other duties that these folks have to do. Pulver Mocker says she understands the city has its priorities. Of course, a hospital route should get plowed first. She just thinks manufacturers drive should make the cut. Trucks are large. They are they're big vehicles, and it takes a lot to stop them. And... You can't put that much public at the end of a road right at the intersection and expect these trucks to be able to get out of the way or get going. For those of you that live on those non-salt roads, when they do get snow covered, the city says that they do have a sand mix that they use when they need more traction. 
Eric and Susan. Tahalil, thank you very much. And we also want to remind you that if you haven't cleared off your sidewalks yet, now is the time. All ice and snow needs to be cleared by noon tomorrow. The city also wants residents to know it is against the law to shovel snow into the road. It has to go into your yard. And if a plow pushes snow up into your curb ramp, it is still on you to remove it. Repeat offenders could face a ticket of $100. The tow trucks and plows are ready for the season, but the people operating them want to make sure you are ready as well. Last night, snow created some dangerous conditions on local roadways, and officials are reminding drivers, take things slowly out on the roads and be prepared. If you're out there on the roads and you have to be, take it slow. There's nothing more important than your life. Officials also recommend stocking your vehicle with extra phone charger, a change of clothes, some food and water in case you get stuck. And, and you might need to wait a while to get a tow. And tonight at 6, we'll tell you how COVID is impacting tow company staffing. Well, five people are now displaced after a house fire. This happened in Janesville. Crews called to the home on West Home Street just before 5.30 last night. When they arrived, firefighters say the back of the home was engulfed in flames. The fire spreading to the attic. Five people, four cats, all evacuated from the home. No injuries. One resident said he reset the home's electrical breaker several times before smelling smoke. The murder trial of Chandler Halderson is set to begin next week. Jury selection starts January January 3rd. The 23 year old Windsor man is accused of killing and dismembering his parents and hiding their bodies. Alderson pleaded not guilty over the summer. The trial is expected to last three weeks. We will have live continuing coverage of the trial streaming on channel3000.com and through our news app. Well, 2022 has the potential to bring massive changes to how Wisconsin allows abortions, all of it hanging on a U.S. Supreme Court decision this year. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, the impact of Wisconsin would be tremendous. In this end of year sit down with News 3 Now, Governor Tony Evers says he has parts of a plan to address it, including possibly working with other states. Naomi Coles reports. It is unlikely to gain any traction in the Republican-controlled legislature, but Governor Evers told us in his end-of-year interview that he is committed to getting an old state law banning all abortions off the books. It's currently moot because of Roe v. Wade, but if Roe v. Wade is partially or fully overturned as it could be, it could take effect once again. We're taking rights away from women all across the state of Wisconsin and their country, and uh, uh, it, would, it, would be a, it would be a sad day. I, I support uh, women's rights to choose, uh, so initially I'll be focusing whatever political efforts I can on getting the state law that uh, bans abortions off the, off the books. We also talked bail reform, the splintered and partisan state of the Capitol today between the governor's office and the legislature majority party, and how so far he has no plans to send National Guard into Wisconsin's overwhelmed hospitals and nursing homes, choosing to rely instead on the federal government for support. I've got all that online right now at channel3000.com. At the Capitol for News 3 Now, I'm Naomi Coles. More Packers have been added to the COVID reserve list. They include guard Ben Braden, linebackers Tipa Galei and Ty Summers, and wide receiver Amari Rogers. It's unclear if the, if the players tested positive or if they were simply close contacts of positive cases. The Packers now have eight main roster players on the list. The team's scheduled to host the Vikings on Sunday. And a few college basketball games are canceled this week because of COVID. The Marquette men's team was supposed to play St. John's on Wednesday. That game now canceled after a COVID outbreak on the St. John's team. Thursday's Badger women's basketball game against Purdue also canceled due to COVID concerns. Those who have purchased tickets to that game, they'll get more information via email. Meanwhile, the Badgers still set to play Arizona State Thursday night at the Las Vegas Bowl. The team left Madison on Friday. Wisconsin Athletic Director Chris McIntosh says he won't be making that trip after testing positive for COVID and will have full coverage from Las Vegas this week. It'll start tomorrow here on News 3 Now. Reminder, that game will kick off late. Kickoff set for 9.30 p.m. Central Time. Thursday night. People who test positive or come into contact with someone with COVID now only have to quarantine for five days instead of 10. The CDC says the decision comes as evidence continues to show the virus is most infectious in the two days before and the three days after symptoms appear. Meanwhile, President Biden held a meeting with state governors and his COVID response team today. He repeated plans to distribute half a billion rapid COVID tests starting next month. There is no 
federal solution. This gets solved at a state level. If you need something, say something. And we, uh, we're going to have your back in any way we can. The president says private insurance reimbursements for take-home COVID tests could begin in two weeks. An Omicron-fueled surge of COVID cases is causing major disruptions across the skies and seas. As crews call out sick, thousands of flights continue to be canceled or delayed this holiday week. Isabel Rosales has more. Travelers left stranded as holiday travel disruptions ripple around the world. According to tracking site FlightAware, more than 2,000 flights canceled globally Monday. We actually changed our flight to a nonstop flight just to, in hopes of hopefully not having any cancellations. The Omicron variant striking airline crews during one of the busiest times of the year for air travel. By sea, at least four cruise ships denied entry from ports this week or prohibited from disembarking after positive COVID-19 cases aboard. When you're at sea, you can't go anywhere or get off the ship, so it kind of felt like we were kind of trapped not knowing how many people had COVID. Demand for COVID-19 tests is soaring. I'm supposed to work this entire week, so I want to make sure that I do have the knowledge that I'm positive if that's the case. But availability, a challenge, as some pharmacies and test sites have run out. Daily case rates in the U.S. have surpassed Delta's surge, while hospitalization numbers remain relatively low. Omicron is a source of concern, but it should not be a source of panic. Doctors expect the Omicron surge to grow in the U.S. Looking ahead to New Year's Eve, medical experts say small gatherings of fully vaccinated people are safe. But when you're talking about a New Year's Eve party, we have 30, 40, 50 people celebrating. You do not know the status of their vaccination, I would recommend strongly stay away from that this year. In Washington, Isabel Rosales. And as for getting one of those home rapid COVID-19 tests, they won't be available until next month and will reach Americans through the mail. With COVID cases rising, Israel is planning to roll out additional booster shots. The country has now started a trial for a fourth dose of the Pfizer COVID vaccine for high-risk residents. Initial results from this study are expected by the end of the week. Top scientists have also suggested the extra shot for health care workers and those over 60. President Biden signs the annual defense funding bill into law today, the National Defense Authorization Act, cleared by Congress earlier in December. This year, the bill authorizes $770 billion for the Defense Department. The measure includes changes to the military justice system to revamp how the military deals with sexual assault and harassment. There's also a 2.7% pay raise for military service members and Defense Department civilian employees. Next on News 3 Now at 5, as you plan your New Year's resolutions, experts suggest focusing on your health. Coming up, the things that should be on top of your your health checklist. And then later, Democratic State Senator Lena Taylor has her eye on a new job in the city of Milwaukee. We'll have those details coming up at six. In the final week of the year off to a strong start on Wall Street. The Dow surging 352 points and NASDAQ up 218. S&P at 65. We'll be right back. What you see is important. How you see is important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care, you'll see. Right now, take 40% off lenses with the purchase of any frames. Fixed, no charge. Ah, that's my son. He always takes care of his mom. Ooh, what's up with Granny's casserole? It's for after your Uncle Joe's funeral. My brother didn't have a life insurance policy. I hear there's a collection to help on Adele. Yeah, a funeral costs north of 9000 these days. That's a hefty bill for family to pay if there's no life insurance check to help. Wow, makes you think, doesn't it? Which reminds me, I've been meaning to tell you I got that $9.95 plan from Colonial Pen. I'm on a fixed income, so price is important. The life insurance on TV. Just $9.95 a month to help you pay my funeral expenses. What about your family, son? You've got a wife and kids and a grandson living with you now, too. Maybe I should get the $9.95 plan, too. Thing is, this has been a rough year for my business, Ma. Money's tight. Still, for $9.95 a month, I don't have a good excuse, do I? I'm Jonathan for Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company. If you're age 50 to 85, just $9.95 a month buys whole life insurance with guaranteed acceptance. 
You cannot be turned down for any health reason. There are no health questions. Guaranteed lifetime coverage. Your insurance can never be canceled. Just pay your premiums. Guaranteed lifetime rate lock. Your rate can never increase. It's locked in as soon as you're covered and stays the same for the rest of your life. With guarantees like these, it's no surprise the 995 plan is Colonial Penn's number one most popular whole life insurance. Now don't forget to wear your good suit tonight. And please call about the 995 plan today while it's on your mind, okay? Call now for free information. Call 1-800-505-7613 for free information and your free beneficiary planner. No obligation. 1-800-505-7613. That's 1-800-505-7613. Call now. What you see is important. That makes quality eye care important, too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Schedule an eye exam before your vision benefits or FSA funds expire. Tonight at 6, we have alert days in the forecast for a winter storm that could bring accumulating snowfall to parts of our area. And we're continuing our call for action week with a lesson for anyone looking to get home improvement work done. That's tonight at 6. News 3 Now's call for action team advocates for you. Asking the right questions. Yeah. You hope to make that right. And getting results. They sent a water heater the next day after you made the call. Call for action only on News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. As you plan how to celebrate the end of the year, doctors say now is also the best time to take stock of your health and make changes to improve in the year ahead. Mandy Gaither explains the five things that should be on your end of the year health checklist. ring in the new year, make sure you set yourself up for a healthy 2022. It's never too late to jump back on the bandwagon, especially if you've put your health needs on the back burner. Dr. Nehi Via says good preventative care helps catch health issues early when they may be easier to treat. She recommends adding these five things to your year-end health checklist. Number one, schedule wellness exams. These visits include a physical exam, making sure you're up to date with your vaccinations, and screenings to check for diseases. Number two, prioritize sleep today. Don't don't wait until next year to create a consistent bedtime routine and put away screens at least a half hour before going to sleep. It's uh, not a surprise that many of our sleep habits have been disrupted during the pandemic. We are sleeping later. Number three, jumpstart your nutrition and exercise habits. Start making small changes now to your nutrition and workout routine. This is a journey and not a destination. So some of these healthy habits should be uh, incorporated before the start of the new year. Number four, discuss your mental well-being. Talk with your doctor about any mental health concerns you have like anxiety and depression. And finally, play. As hectic as the final days of the year are, make sure you schedule some time to go outdoors and enjoy time with family. Don't forget our furry friends. They are have been there for us during the pandemic and even before, and they are vital to improve our mental health. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. All right, check out the video from Fargo. The city recording over nine inches of snow today. Drifting snow forced several major roadways to close last night and into this afternoon. After the snow, the brutally, brutally cold wind chills to 45 below zero are expected tonight. That is in Fargo. More snow expected for our area as well. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti to reflect on what we've had so far, Gary. Well, you know, the, uh, we, we missed out on snow on the ground for Christmas. We got it the day after. Most areas picked up about an inch or two, and you can see the southern part of the state now has some snow cover, but it's a, a light snow cover. The more significant snow cover has been in the northern part of the state. The storm that brought us an inch or two of snow in most areas brought heavier amounts up to the north. You can see now parts of Minnesota seeing uh, close to a foot of snow on the ground through the central and northern portions of the state and about six inches or more over parts of northern Wisconsin. Snowfall potential from this next weather system will be in two areas. One part of the system passing to the north, bringing about three to six inches into parts of Minnesota, but it'll also be accompanied by strong winds and uh, that area could see more significant impacts. And then a general one to four or five inch snowfall across southern Wisconsin. The lighter amounts down toward the Illinois state line where there may be a more of a mix of precipitation for a time. Areas north and northwest of Madison will stay as snow for more of the time or almost all of the time, so the amounts might be a little heavier there. I'm thinking 
three or four inches, the five or six inches more likely north of the Dells up toward La Crosse if they do occur at all. Now there also could be some minor ice accumulations. Right now the more significant freezing rain is expected over parts of eastern Iowa, but some of that could sneak into southern Wisconsin. Again, uh, it, depending on whether or not we see a mix or more snow, that will depend on what the final snowfall amounts turn out to be. Winter weather advisories in effect pretty much for the entire state of Wisconsin, although northwestern Wisconsin and parts of Minnesota under a winter storm warning and even a blizzard warning uh, up right along the Lake Michigan shoreline or Lake uh, Superior shoreline in northeastern Minnesota because of the high winds that will be accompanying the snow. Now on future track you can see the clouds moving in overnight but the precipitation doesn't arrive until probably mid to late morning tomorrow morning. It snows pretty steadily through the afternoon. Uh, again there will be a mix of precipitation but a lot of this will be winding down pretty quickly tomorrow evening. Then we'll see maybe some breaks in the clouds before the next weather system kind of passes to the south with some flurries from Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday night. But temperatures will stay seasonably cold in the wake of the storm. Plus the fact that we'll have some snow on the ground will keep temperatures on the cold side. Three things you need to know in the forecast. Look for that snow mainly from tomorrow morning into early tomorrow evening. Uh, there could be a little bit of a mix south of Madison and then cold weather with near normal temperatures through New Year's Eve. But by New Year's Day, another st uh, storm system could bring accumulating snow and then that'll be followed by very cold weather for the following Sunday. Temperatures right now are in the middle 30s here, but look at already in North Dakota and Minnesota, or, uh, Montana. Temperatures are well below zero. Wind chills are now about 25 to 30 below zero there, and there are wind chill advisories and wind chill warnings in effect for much of North Dakota into Montana. So the really cold air is just up to the north of us. Fortunately, at least for the time being, it'll stay up to the north. Winter weather advisories starting tomorrow morning over southwestern Wisconsin, ending to late tomorrow evening north of the Dells. Look for uh, snow to develop tomorrow. Could be mixed with some uh, per mixed precipitation, maybe one to five inches of snow accumulation, high temperature at 34. You can see the precipitation arriving tomorrow morning, moving out by tomorrow evening, and then we see uh, just some breaks in the clouds by early on Wednesday morning. Snowfall amounts heaviest north and west of the Wisconsin River, maybe three to four or five inches of snow there, and maybe some minor ice accumulations. Seven to ten day forecast, you can see those temperatures, seasonably cold, snow on New Year's Day, very cold with wind chills down to 20 below zero by Sunday morning, and then temperatures rebounding for the end of next week. As we check out first warrant traffic, we're in between holidays. It's typically a, a time of year where uh, conditions are pretty good. There's the Beltline at Park Street. Travel moving pretty uh, steadily in both directions on the Beltline, as well as the interstates and the major highways around Dane County. Travel times on the Beltline, 15 minutes either direction between University Avenue and the interstate. Heading out of Madison, the normal 25 minutes from the Beltline to Janesville and I-3990. A quick 16 minutes to Middleton to Sauk City on US-12 and 18 minutes downtown to Sun Prairie. That's your News 3 Now First Warrant Traffic. Gary, thank you. Coming up, the finishing touches are being made to the Rose Bowl Parade Floats. We'll take a closer look at this year's creations after the break. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Stop whitening your smile the old-fashioned way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes to an hour. I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Paraswabs. When I met Dr. Ginnaker and he introduced me to Paraswabs and I saw how effective they were and how easy they were to use, I knew we had to share it with the world. Paraswabs was clinically studied to whiten natural teeth as well as stained caps, crowns, and veneers. It's so effective, it works on stains caused by coffee, tea, red wine, and and even smoking. For those of you who have that one stained tooth that's darker than the rest, Power Swabs can target that area using swab precision. I really love the fact that you're able to go individually on each tooth and make sure that it's gonna be wider. So this New Year's, if you have yellowing between your teeth or coffee stains near your gum line, just snap, swab, and smile. And each five minute application, you'll see whiter teeth. So stop whitening your smile the old fashioned way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes or an hour and start using the Power Swabs 5-Minute Solution. Just snap, swab, and smile. After just seven days, the results were awesome. Power Swabs was easy to use every day, and each day I could see it better and better, and from beginning to end, it's definitely whiter. Uh, they look clean. They feel clean. Um, 
And people have made comments about it, which is nice. Call for your five-minute solution to whiter teeth. This new year, order Power Swabs and receive up to 40% off the retail price. Get a free Power Swabs Quick Stick Pen with your order. The Quick Stick Pen is your on-the-go solution to help prevent stains from adhering to your teeth after drinking coffee, tea, or even after smoking. And in addition to saving up to 40% on your purchase and your free Quick Stick Pen, get free shipping by ordering now. Dial the number on your screen or visit powerswabs.com today. From Tina Fey and the creator of Saturday Night Live comes Mean Girls, the hilarious hit Broadway musical. Why don't I know you? Come see Tina Fey's Mean Girls at Overture Center, January 11th through 16th. Get your tickets now at overture.org. stress wear you down and the year feeling great at planet fitness with our big end of year sale join for just one dollar down ten dollars a month cancel anytime now through december 31st and end the year on the right or left foot with tons of variety and space in our squeaky clean clubs and use a crowd meter in our app to pick the best time to visit join for one dollar down ten dollars a month cancel anytime hurry the big end of year sale ends december 31st join now at your local club or online at planetfitness.com hurry deal ends friday december 31st you know, a lot of Badger fans were probably at the Rose Parade the last time they had one. That's true. Canceled, of course, last year because of the pandemic. Next week's Rose Parade and the bowl game, they are expected to go on. Volunteers have less than a week to finish decorating all of the floats for the parade. Tina Patel shows us their progress. 2022 will be here before we know it. And once again, the Rose Parade will feature dozens of elaborate and colorful floats. That's if all these volunteers can get everything done in time. We're going to have hundreds of people coming this week. And we work really, really hard. And, and we have a group of very passionate people. For many organizations, the floats are a chance to not only create something beautiful, but also to speak to a worldwide audience. AIDS Healthcare Foundation has created floats for a decade now. They're fun, they're colorful, they're really well designed and built, but they tend to have an advocacy message as well. This year, their futuristic float will highlight the importance of getting the COVID-19 vaccine to countries around the world. The Donate Life float is celebrating the culture of Venice, but its real goal is to encourage more people to be organ donors. To share the importance of saying yes to the nation, of saving and healing lives. But before any messages can be shared, there are a lot of seeds and petals to be sorted and glued, a number of last-minute test drives to make sure all the engineering that goes into these floats will work as planned. It is amazing that there's only five days between now and parade day, but it all gets done. Flowers come in, the dry materials are already here, decorators are here, teams of volunteers are going to be coming through. Everyone focused on keeping a beloved tradition alive. To have the parade back in person, it's a touchstone of Southern California living. It's kind of like comfort food to be able to have this parade back. After the parade on New Year's Day, Utah will play Ohio State at 4 o'clock. And we're back with a final check of your first warrant forecast in just a moment. You're watching Madison's fastest growing newscast. News 3 now at 5. We're spending more time than ever before at home. Where the perfect pendant can spotlight your newfound skills in the kitchen. Where the right chandelier takes daily dinner from basic to brilliant. And where your decorating choices are all of a sudden illuminated. With Patriot Lighting, your lighting becomes a reflection of your personal style. Modern, sleek, eclectic, whatever your pleasure. We have hundreds of options to make your home shine a little brighter. Find your style with Patriot Lighting, only at Menards. Guys, do you suffer from erectile dysfunction? Now there's great news. Peak Performance for Men will help you regain your performance and confidence naturally. Peak Performance for Men uses an advanced form of acoustic wave therapy, clinically shown to open up and regrow blood vessels, restoring normal and natural function ability where it counts most. There are no needles, no surgery, and best of all, no pain. Call now and receive an ultrasound. Your initial consultation, all for free in over $300 value. Call Peak Performance for Men today. 
How much money have you wasted trying to find the right shade of foundation to match your skin tone? You end up with so many unused bottles, yet you can't bear to throw them out. Now, there's Color of Beauty self-adjusting foundation, which means you'll never search for the perfect shade again. It's really difficult for me to find a good tone foundation. I usually purchase about three or four and sometimes mix them. Color Beauty is a game changer in finding the right foundation. You put it on your skin and it transforms into your your own skin tone. The Color Beauty Foundation is so simple to put on. My skin looks great and it just looks awesome. The key to the innovative Color Beauty formula is tiny color beads that release and blend to perfectly match your skin tone as you apply it. The foundation is white when it comes out of the bottle, but when I begin to apply it, it adjusts to blend perfectly with the color of my skin. My biggest problem area is my cheeks right here. Color Beauty feels really light on my skin and I can tell that it is pretty full coverage so it looks like I don't have too much foundation on but it is covering all my acne scars like I was saying before. I actually really love it. It's weightless and it's full coverage and also it literally just matches my skin as soon as I put it on. It's no work. I've never experienced a foundation like this. Color Beauty only comes in two colors, light and medium. If you have fair skin or you burn easily, go with the light. If you have darker skin, go with the medium. Plus, with an SPF of 50, they're getting the highest level of sun protection in a lightweight formula. And best of all is Color Beauty's exclusive special. Order this New Year's and get 40% off. That means you'll get the color adjusting foundation, the skin smoothing primer, and the fan favorite lash enhancer for thicker, longer looking lashes at 40% off. Plus, get free shipping. Visit color40.com or call the number on your screen. Before we leave you at five, let's get a final check on the weather with Gary. Now we have some snow on the ground. Temperatures are a little bit colder, 34 in Madison, but already below freezing to our north and west. Winter weather advisories start at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning from much of southern Wisconsin. They start at noon for areas north of the Dells and run until midnight for areas north of the Dells. One to three inches of snow from Madison to the north and west. Uh, heavier amounts out toward the Dells and maybe some minor ice accumulations as well. All right, Gary, thanks. We're back in 30 minutes for News 3 Now at 6. CBS Evening News is next.